Hey guys, what is up? I am Devil Driven. Uh, today's video, we got the uh, final reveals from uh, Forbidden Treasures. Some really cool cards. Um, loving the Nilfgaard cards. Um, and we got Golden Necker. He's he's here. <laughs> I figured we'd go over that card first. Um, lots of really cool cards. There's a couple that are like... I, I don't ever see them seeing play. I don't see the re reason why you would play them, but... Um, let's check them out. Uh, first one up for sure, Gold Necker. I'm super excited about this one. He, he's a um, special card, kind of strange, but um, Deploy. If your starting deck does not have cards with a provision cost of 10 or more, play the top unit, special, and artifact from your deck. So you can, if you wanted to, Yan is uh, under this, correct? Calvate. <laughs> How many provisions is he in? I forget again. Ten. No, you can't. Okay. So you're looking at you're gonna want to play this with the nine ten. So Vilga, f well, you, I guess the Siri Nova is the option too. Um, so Siri Nova, you can pull all in one shot. Um, special cards. Becker's Twisted Mirror. Um, Double cross so you could pull something else in the same go. And then the artifact. Because you're not uh, or you can go Royal Decree. Um and then the artifacts. What kind of artifacts could we pull with it? Um Probably the locations, huh? Yeah, the location wouldn't be too bad. Um, I guess that's not really that great, huh? Um, you can give an armor to Renova or one of the other cards. It seems like it's going to have a fun interaction. I could see it going through with like the hyper thin package so you're all there pull Siri Nova um, and then you can have your Triss, Yennefer, Vilgefortz, um, Tibor, or Golem, Combo I guess with the knickers and stuff it might make it weird because if it's this top unit um there are cards that put stuff on the top, so you could put, um, you would run the, the Nilfgaard cards, the, where are they at? They're five, aren't they? They're only four? Yeah, these guys, the Couriers. So you put it on the top of your deck and then you can full blown pull your whole combo. So you play Golden Necker, you play Siri Nova, you play this special and then you play an artifact as well. Is that good? I guess in Hyper Thin it probably is. Uh, fun card. I'm excited to see it uh, hit the board. Um, the next one another really interesting card um, rune mage uh, so it's only four strength ten provisions human mage but deploy for the rest of the game your create effects now show five options instead of three and but when this thing hits the board it does create and play a rune stone so he picks a rune stone it could be random so this is gonna fit into assimilate it's gonna give you more options with assimilate 
So it's probably going to play more than 10. When you... Because you're playing a runestone. Most of those can get some pretty good pulls for the most part. Especially if you're getting five options. I mean, the odds of you getting... So, if you have stuff already on the board, it's going to proc assimilate. At the very least, you're going to get a five. Um, so, it plays for... A, it's a nine for ten, but with the additional procs, it's going to be pretty good. Like I said, I think you're going to find some pretty good options to pull stuff with the runestone. Because you're going to have five options. Um, I think this is going to be right at home with Assimilate. No worries there. Um, next one up. I, I, I really like this card. I think this card's cool. It, it being neutral is kind of weird because it just feels like a Nilfgaard card, but I don't know. Um, so the next one is um, Troll Porter. Six for six. Deploy. Banish all cards in your hand. And then draw as many cards. So, if you got a crap hand, you drew some bad cards, but you have, you didn't draw your siege, <laughs> um, and you have three cards left in your deck. You play this; it gets rid of your three crap cards. You draw your other cards, and you complete your exodia, which is pretty good. Um, is this better than Maxi? Technically, I mean, do you want to be playing a six for six? But you play maxi sometimes, you know, like that. So the thing is, I don't know. It, it seems like it'd be okay. You, you get rid of some bad bronzes you don't want to play. And you draw possibly some more of your golds. You play this and you go up against mill, you're going to ball your eyes out. I guess you can always play it on the opposite row. If you don't want to, if you have a good hand. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I don't know. It, it seems it seems like a card, kind of like Maxi, where you just put it in the deck if you just feel like you're not drawing your cards for the day. Um, what do we got here? Um, ornate Cessner. Swap the power of the highest and lowest power unit on the battlefield. Alright, so... It's eight provisions. So the, it, it, it's once again one of those like last say things. Do you... But it can't go over defender. Um, so if you go up against the crazy Sigvold, you, their Sigvold is your Sigvold. You have to have units on the board, though, because Sigfold and Canute kill everything. <laughs> um, I mean, it's only eight provisions, but, I mean, there's cards like Triangle Within a Triangle and stuff like that, or uh, Becker's Twisted Mirror that don't really see play. So are you going to want this when you could just play? I guess it's a cheaper version, but then also, too, you have to have the units on the board. Um, I could see this fitting into probably that uh, Matic deck I'm going to be building with the uh, what's it called if you don't have last say problem is if you do have the highest unit and you flip flop with your opponent <laughs> so if you run into that situation where this might be a card you have to discard because you have the highest unit if you go up against swarm it might be bad right because it doesn't say your unit and their unit just says swap the highest and lowest power so i don't know that's something it it it's a it's a last say thing but it's like if you don't go up against if you go up against something tall it has to be really tall for it to swing the whole game but i mean you're if you're doing that you're 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 probably playing igni or you know heat wave or something similar to that i'll play the card because it's a control card but i think it also can have a lot of bad implications um 
I don't know how these got mixed up. Um, Ring of Favor. So this card seems a little bit weird. So it's a special card. This card starts in your hand. Boost an allied unit by four. While in your hand, at the end of your turn, increase the boost by two. When your opponent passes, banish self from hand and draw a card. When moved to deck, banish self. So you can't mulligan it. Is that what it's saying? Banish self from hand. When opponent passes, banish self from hand and draw a card. When moved to deck, banish self. So do you lose all these boosts if they pass? It doesn't it seems like it's boosting. Yeah, and you get to pick, correct? While in your hand at the end of your turn, increase the boost by two. So it goes four, six, eight. So it's like uh the little goat guy but in for ST but a neutral special hmm there's got to be a way to fit this into hand buff you're gonna try at least <laughs> I just don't the the part I don't get is the banish part. Like if you if it banishes, it, it's it's putting it on a card, so it's not banishing the card that you put the boosts on. So, um, yeah. So it it, it kind of like acts like uh, Sunset Wanderer. Like it'll jump out of your hand into the deck, and then you draw a card. Kind of like how Sunset hits the board, and then this one. I don't know, it seems like a, a cool card. I mean, but it's slow. Like, you go up against something with huge tempo and you're just holding this card in hand. It's actually, because you can't play it, right? It's, you can't play this card. This card has to stay in your hand. Oh, when you do play it, it boosts by four. So, oh, okay, so you have to play this to boost something by four, but that's so freaking slow. You would have to keep it in your hand for four turns for it to get max value. Yeah, this, this one seems odd now that I'm reading it. So you'd have to keep it in your hand for two turns and then boost an allied unit. But if you keep it in your hand the whole time and it banishes something and you draw a card, is it worth it? You're giving up round control, though. You're basically saying I'm giving up round control if you keep this in your hand, is the way I'm reading it. Because it's four four points that doesn't go on the board. It's like playing Dunka with nothing. Like That don't seem right at all. Um, so then we got these... Um, what do we got here? Uh, let's go over this card, because this card's just... This was the one where I was like, this doesn't make any sense. So it's a four provision artifact. It's gold. You can only have one of them. Vial of for Forbidden Knowledge. Zeal. Order. Boost an allied unit by four. And give it vitality four. At the start of your game, if both players have this card in their deck, summon self to a random allied row and transform and it transforms into the vial of forbidden knowledge unsealed order look at your opponent's starting deck cooldown one so i guess you get on a dry pass no because at the start of the game they both come down so it's open deck list for four provisions and it thins you're thinning for your opponent too because that's horrible <laughs> You're giving your... I guess you could... Mill's probably going to love it because it makes a, makes it come out. But then you would have to be playing this yourself. Which doesn't seem like you would want to do that at all. Like, 
That, that's why I said this card's never going to see play. Like, never. Two mill players will have it in hand. That's it. I, it it's just... It, it makes no sense. Like, this one's just not good. Um... Let's check out this one. The uh, Mysterious Puzzle Box. Now, I like this card. This card, I think, is pretty cool. Um, it's an artifact, five provisions, disloyal. Deploy. Spawn a seven-power gin on the opposite row and choose a card from your hand. Adrenaline, too, so it keeps you from doing this towards the end of the game. Spawn a seven-power gin on the opposite row and destroy self and said. So you don't want to hang on to this very long or you're going to be in big trouble. Order, pick a card from your hand at the end of your turn, transform highest provision chosen cards into the thing from the box, then banish. And then the thing from the box is it, I love this art, I absolutely love it. Um, it's a 13 power doomed token. And the way they explained it to me, or the way they explained it on the stream, is you and your opponent basically bid on this 13 provision card. So if you pick a 4 provision card and they pick a 5 provision card, they get 13 points. If you both pick two 5s, then you both get two 13 provision cards. Um, to me, this is like a bait card, okay? You pick this, you, you win it, and then you play Sahil or uh, Shillard. And you nuke that 13 point card. But the problem is, is they if they don't if they play it right instantly, you just gave them a huge point. It's fun. Once again, it's a fun card, but I could see this just totally giving your opponent the game. Like you just you're you're banking on a meme that you might not have. <laughs> but I guess you could be using the the swap. Um the Cessna or whatever. You do this in the Cessna. I guess. But then you have to draw both those combo pieces. Not that great. It's it's once again it's fun, but um I think we had one more. No, those are all the Those are all the neutrals. The neutrals they're you know stuff you're gonna put in the deck I, there's gonna be a huge balance patch so we'll see what goes on with that I, I, they're going over it right now probably but um, let's check out the uh, monsters NR and um, Nilfgaard let's do Nilfgaard first um, so Obsidian Mirror it's a tactic it's huge um, so you can put it in your Yan deck. Um, spawn three power copies of three bronze enemy units on their opposite row. Spawn one power copies of three bronze enemy units on their opposite row. So... I you are putting them on your side of the board. It's just because you're pulling them out of their graveyard. So that's why it says opposite. So you can get three engines. You play Mushy Truffle. You bump them up. You got three engines for four provisions. Seems pretty busted. <laughs> um, bad round one if you didn't kill anything, though. Because you're going to have this card in your hand and it's doing nothing. So you have to keep that in mind. Because it needs... Oh, it's on the opposite. Okay. It's not graveyard. It's just on the opposite row. So they have to have three enemy units. And they have to be one power. Or they come out as one power. Ah. <sighs> so you want to you wanna find engines. If they're damage engines, these are going to die anyway, so it doesn't do anything. But you're proccing assimilate, so does it proc assimilate for each one, or is it all in one shot? 
because if it's three in a row, you got the value right. That'll play for six if you have like say three assimilate engines on the board. I like the card. I think it's cool. It's just gonna be like you have to play it with like mushy truffle and stuff to get the boosts to get these out of the danger zone. Uh, and then the next card, this card's super interesting. Um, it's the Prophet. I love this art. Absolutely love it. Uh, it's an 8 for 7. Once again, these 7s, though, they get kind of awkward when you're deck building. Um, he's a human cultist, which is weird for Nilfgaard. Uh, deploy, damage self by 2, then lock all units in your opponent's hand until the end of the round. The next time your opponent plays a locked unit, remove lock from all units in your opponent's hand. Adrenaline 2, lock self instead. So it keeps you from using this at the end of the game to lock, like, their finishers. It just locks itself. It doesn't do the 2 damage. I guess no. If I'm reading it right, then instead of the two damage, it's not doing the two damage. So it plays for eight, and then it just locks everything in their hand. But they have to play one, so they lose. If they're playing something with an order, it's locked, and they can't use it at the end of the round unless they're inspired zeal. I don't know, this card seems fun. I'll, I I like this card. I like this card a lot. I love the art. The art's fantastic. And then let's uh let's take a look at the monster cards next. Uh giant toad. Three for five. Deploy. Consume an allied unit. When you play a death wish unit, summon self from your graveyard to the same row. Consume it again. Consume it and gain doomed. So you, it's like uh, a Ruhin consume. So you can, is this an endless loop that you could do with Ruhin? Kind of, huh? Or the succubuses. Like if you get them in the graveyard, you could play this. You play another one. I think this card gives death with it. You wish a huge bump. But the problem is, is it's it's a another it's a cheap consume for Vi. And Vi can and you can't interact with this consume for Vi. Right? Consume an allied unit. When you play a Death Wish unit, summon self from your graveyard to the same row, consume it, and gain Doomed. So you'd have to purify it to keep that going. I don't know, you play a couple of, well, you play a couple of these in round one, you get to consume again. It seems like it's Vi, it's Vi uh, synergy here, which I, I'm not a fan of, but I love the card for just regular Death Wish. I think that's sweet, because a lot of times they just don't have enough. You want to put more Death Wish units in than Consumes, and the problem is, is you put the Consumes in, you don't draw the Death Wishes. At least if you play the Death Wish cards, you can still proc them, you know what I mean? I think this card's fun. I love it. Uh, and then the uh, Necronomicon. Uh, Evil Dead fans will love this. I love the art. Uh, Necromancer's Tome Artifact. When you play a bronze unit, summon a random copy of it from your graveyard to the same row and give it Doom. So you can... 
Whenever you play a bronze unit, summon a random copy of it from your graveyard to the same row and give it Doom. Once again, it seems like it's Vi support. Also, too, the... I mean, if you're talking monsters, this would be good with the... Uh, The mushy truffle ones. Um, the bonded guys. Uh, I'd be good with these. Gan Kian. You could pull them from the graveyard as a 9. Play as 11s. That's pretty good. Witch apprentices, if you play them early, seems okay. Where are the bonded ones? You telling me those are 6s? No, they're only 4s, right? these guys the lesser witchers whenever you play a blonde bronze unit what? whenever you play a bronze unit summon a random copy of it from your graveyard to the same row and give it doom so you could spawn another one of these on top of the one you just played Summoning double death wish units seems really fun, and then you could caught you can eat them with giant toads for a pretty big swing. But once again, you're playing you're playing a card that has no points. It's an artifact that you're putting on the board and you played nothing. <laughs> so if this gets I mean granted, if this gets answered um that's gonna be message here all right ah uh, and then we get the nr for the last ones um first one traveling priestess three for four and i guess this is um what's his name um visigoda is that what it is go to NR they're at nine right knowledge right no on a nine eight yeah yeah this go the way I guess this card works is so it's a three for four it's got veil so you can't lock it which is crazy deploy gain one charge Whenever this unit is put back in your deck, increase the number of charges by three. Zeal, order, boost an allied unit by one, charges zero. So you can put this, you can keep put this back in the deck with, um, what's his name? Um, The guy that puts the cards back in the deck. He's only a seven? Or is he a six? Istrid. So you can shuffle those back in the deck. And then the, the four provision card. The Envoy. You can move it to the top. Because you're taking them out of the deck and then putting them back in. I'm not sure if there's any other cards. Uh, I guess practice makes perfect. It's a. It's not a mage. It's a cleric. So that doesn't count. Thankfully, because if you pulled this out for like 20 points, that would be stupid. Um, you think alumni are bad? <laughs> Holy shit. Um, Griffin Mentors. You could pull them out, I guess. Those are the ones that I see. If there's any other ones, let me know. And then uh, Command Shift M. And then the uh, last one. 
is this mutagen mutagenator artifact once again putting a card on the board that does nothing <laughs> like you have no points you're playing this with no points so that you you've got to be playing these with red coin whenever you play a unit on your melee row boost five random units on your side of the battlefield with the same provision costs by one Whenever you play a unit on your range row, boost five random units in your deck with the same provision cost. So this one, you put it, you're probably going to want to put it on, if it's round. So this seems like it synergizes with... Um, the guys that uh, keep buffing these ones Cinch and Royal Guards you could play commandos buff five commandos in your deck on carryover that seems pretty stupid since they're all the same you play that you play some Five provision unit, which would be one of these, I guess, or something. Caraballistas. You're also pulling stuff out out with AA, so you can boost all your fours and fives. Works with machines really well. Yeah, it's, it's going to be your fives and your fours, but I mean, like, this with Commando seems like it's pretty... You're adding a bunch of... You're adding a bunch to this. I don't know, this video went a little bit too long here. Um, let me know what you guys think, what you're excited to play, what's your favorite cards. Um, I'm definitely excited for the Nilfgaard cards. I like the Golden Necker. Um, the monster cards actually seem really cool. Uh, I might actually monkey with monsters. Um, the neutrals, I like. I like the golden necker. I like the mage that gives you the create options. Um, the ring of favor seems okay. I love the profit card, is for sure. Um, and the troll porter I'm not sure on, but we'll see. But um, I think it's one of those things, if you're just not talented, that troll porter, you're going to put it in your deck. Like some days you're not drawing your golds. Well, it's time to put in troll porter because I'm drawing all bronzes. Um, but um, thanks for all the love on the last video. Uh, we'll start making some stuff up on Tuesday. Um, you guys are wonderful. Uh, check me out too on uh, Twitch. Devil Driven, the eyes in it or elves. Thank you for everything. I'll see you guys very, very soon.